The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We pick things up in positive territory across the board. Big week of earnings. We got a Fed meeting on Wednesday. We got an ECB meeting as well. We got a Bank of Japan meeting in there as well. We have some earnings from some of the biggest tech companies out there. We jump into it in the S&Ps, up by about two tenths percent to kick off the trading. S&Ps up eight points at 45.73. Like I was saying last week, absolutely remarkable, right? It'll be interesting to see what happens on Wednesday, the press conference to follow, all but assured that looking like we're getting a hike, is it going to be the last one? Looking like we're getting a hike, almost 99% sure on the ECB as well. We'll get into that in a moment, but what is Chairman Powell going to say on that press conference, man? Where are we going in September? No matter what he says... We got a lot of data before that next meeting, right? We've been talking about it for some time. This meeting really, really only got June data in between the June meeting and the July meeting. We do not have an August meeting for the Fed. Next meeting for the Fed, September 21st, I believe. So you're going to get all the July data. You're going to get all of August data. You're going to come into that September meeting. And yeah, we'll see where the data goes. That's going to drive some of the action. We're still dealing with a core CPI number, folks, year over year, 4.8%. Remember that. Still dealing with a number of 4.8%. We are not out of the woods yet, man. Chairman Powell, difficult task on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, we'll see where the market goes. But we are within a stone's throw of all-time highs. Not many weeks have we kicked off, right? Saying that you could get there, man. We're only about 200, not even about, let's do it, 235 S&P points. That's it, man, 235 S&P points. On a Fed week, you could get that type of volatility. Uh, nonetheless, you jump to the NASDAQ 100. We got a little bit of rebalancing going on today. Interesting to see how that trades. No real reaction probably going to happen. All that rebalancing already had to take place. Those funds have to mimic the new weighting as of this morning. So I believe that all took place Thursday, man. That was the action, right? You got a little bit of a sell-off on some of the NASDAQ 100, but you jumped to some of the biggest equities out there. Amazon shares, you're going to be up by 50 cents today. You jump over to Apple, the big dog, they're going to be up by 60 cents today. You jump over to Microsoft shares, trading up by about $2. You jump over to Google shares, trading up by more than a dollar as markets pick things up in top positive territory. We jump over to commodities, crude. Look at that acceleration. We just have a, had a 78 handle in crude. We're trading at 77.83. Gold contract up a dollar to 19.68 this morning. Notes and bonds, higher price, lower yield coming into Fed week. We get the 10 year up by six ticks right now. The 10 year yield down about three basis points, 3.81%. The yield on the 10 year, 3.81% as yields fall a bit with a little bit of higher price. The 30 year is up by 10 ticks at 126.22. We jump over to the dollar index this morning. Gonna be interesting, interesting week. Interesting is a great word, right? Can mean a million things. Uh, gonna be an interesting week with the Fed and the ECB meeting, Bank of Japan out there as well. Dollar index, catching a bid, back above 101 at 101.22. You jump over to the Euro US dollar. We're at about 110, we were at 112.70. Last week, about Tuesday, you jump over to the yen as we get the Bank of Japan with their meeting as well. 141, we put that on a little bit longer term basis. You see the volatility in the yen out there. I may sneeze. Hold on. I think I'm going to. Nope, might have fought it off. It's surprising. Sometimes on the air, you can fight it off a little bit harder than you can when you're not on the air. Uh, and let's jump over to the VIX this morning to continue the wrap-up. 1423, we jump over to the five-minute chart. A little bit of elevated VIX, right? Coming into a risky week, potentially. Markets in positive territory. VIX spiking up by 60 cents. That's a 4.6% pop. Uh, so people taking a little bit of insurance, maybe. You got the S&P sitting at 4,600, folks. And as, you know, seeing headlines this morning, alluding to the fact that we are almost back to the highs, right? that we have almost recouped the entire bear market of a, what, 
this got to 3,500. So you're talking about a 1,300 point S&P pullback, okay? 20 months after it began, after it began, that's not after its trough, that is after it began. Um, not out of the woods yet though. Big week in terms of the Fed, excuse me, and we'll see where we go from there. Let's jump over to the headline, it is, it is, as it is a big week all around. Momentous week is as CNBC puts it, Fed, ECB, and Bank of Japan near the pivot point. So our week is Wednesday. You get the Fed. Last month, they paused their run of 10 consecutive interest rate hikes. They've been going since March of 2022. You're talking about 16 months they've been hiking. They recap some of the numbers that I mentioned. Okay, 4.8%. That is the core CPI, folks, as of June. Policymakers reiterating their commitment to 2%. I heard a lot of conversations, man, about potentially the Fed shifting that inflation goal to 3%. Not sure they'd ever admit that. When they would, it would be a problem. Uh, but a lot of conversations talking about that maybe that's what they should do. Maybe that's what they will do in terms of adjusting their inflation goal. We're not there yet, but we'll see. That might give them the room to go a lot slower than the market's thinking, man. Um, the market is all but certain the Fed's going to go up 25 basis points. That's going to bring the target rate to five and a quarter to 5.5 percent. The Fed's communicated its willingness to raise rates again if necessary, but July could be the last hike. Again, as I mentioned, we're going to get two months of data. Interesting to see what the chairman's going to say here. He's going to leave himself a lot of room no matter what happens okay because they get two months of data so this is not like you're getting one month of data you're getting two full months of data you're gonna get two cpi prints you're gonna get two non-farm payroll reports right you're gonna get two retail sales numbers etc it's gonna go uh the fmc however will maintain a tight monetary policy stance to aid continued softening in demand and consequently inflation is the the jive out there now we jump to the ecb okay their cpi is at 5.5%, its lowest point since January 2022, the core number 5.4. Remember, ours is at 4.8, okay, up slightly on the month. Now, the ECB raised to 3.5% in June. And I remember listening to that press conference, folks, and Lagarde had basically already said it was coming in July, okay? So there's a 99% chance, as they put it of a further 25 basis point hike that's coming in July for the ECB on Thursday. So remember, we got our Fed meeting on Wednesday. We get the ECB on Thursday. We're probably going to hike on Wednesday. It'd be a shock if we didn't. It would be an absolute shock, even more so if the ECB did not hike. But what is going to be the verbiage coming out of that meeting on the ECB as well? And here's the quote. In contrast to June, as I mentioned, when Lagarde said it is very likely the case that we'll continue to increase rates in July. Can't get much more direct than that as a um, ECB president. We do not expect her to pre-commit the council to another hike at September's meeting. So that may not be. Then that's where volatility may come in, man. So that's Thursday. We'll see what Lagarde has to say after they hike. Again, they're only at 3.5% right now, right? And they have hotter inflation than we have right now. So they probably need to bring it. And that's going to be interesting to see how if they continue to hike, and this is our last hike, how does that impact things across the board, whether you're talking about the dollar index, whether you're talking about our yields, et cetera. And then you got the Bank of Japan. So the Bank of Japan, what's their interest rate? negative 0.1% in June. We'll finish this conversation when we get up, folks. We got to talk about earnings. We got a big week. We got about 165 S&P stocks with their earnings this week. Second, second biggest week of earnings uh, this cycle. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory as we kick off. As I mentioned there, you got 165 companies in the S&P 500 reporting their numbers this week alone, second biggest week of earnings this cycle. Among them, some of the biggest tech companies out there. Uh, let's jump into them as we talk about it. So we're going to have Google out with their numbers. You jump over to the earnings tab. So Google is out tomorrow. Is it Microsoft also? Sure is. So Google tomorrow. Microsoft tomorrow, MetaShares on Wednesday. There's another one down the line. Forgive me, and I'll pull it up as we jump through. Big companies, some of the biggest tech companies out there. Amazon, August 3rd, as you see the following week. Apple, August 3rd as well. Put that date on your calendar for sure. All right, so jumping back to the Bank of Japan for a little bit of discussion in terms of we did our central bank, the Fed. We did the ECB, which is on Thursday. You have the Bank of Japan. They held their short-term interest rate at negative 0.1% in June, having first adopted negative interest rates in 2016. We talked to our man, Teddy Kegstad, every Wednesday at, Wednesday at 40 past. Uh, he writes the Tiger Forex report. We've been talking about this for a while. They got a new governor out there running things. You talk about some volatility on the yen. Absolutely remarkable that they are at negative interest rates, man. Uh, still, now, they talk about... First quarter growth in Japan was revised sharply higher to 2.7% last month. Inflation has remained above 2% for 15 straight months. It's only at 3.3. I say only compared to what? Our, country, our inflation in America, the inflation in Europe, of course. However, this has prompted some early speculation that the Bank of Japan may be forced to finally begin reversing their ultra-loose monetary policy, but the market is still pricing in no revisions to either rates or or the yield curve, uh, how do they pronounce it? What is their uh, yield curve control, YCC policy? No changes is what's expected. Uh, yield curve control is usually a temporary measure in which central bank targets a longer term interest rate than buys or sells government bonds at a level necessary to hit the rates. So they're targeting rates, right? They're using either demand or supply to influence the price, which then influences the yield, et cetera. Under Japan's yield curve control, the central bank targets short-term interest rates at negative 0.1% and the 10-year government bond yield at 0.5% above or below zero. It's remarkable numbers, man, when you look about it. So they're this week as well. Um, 
And we get it all, man. Fed, our Fed on Wednesday. That's, of course, going to be the mainstay. You jump right to the ECB on Thursday. And sometimes we've seen it where it's taken some impact for the Wednesday, the press conference, maybe Thursday's the day the market really reacts to what's going on as you get the ECB one day after the Fed. Uh, nonetheless, we'll see where we go from there, man. All right, what else are we going to talk about? we got to talk about Barbie and Oppenheimer, right? Barbenheimer, $235 million between the two films. Now, what's interesting is I saw Barbie getting touted on, we have Spectrum Cable. We have Spectrum Internet at home, and we have uh, a, a cord, you know, the basic cable package that comes with it. And so, oh no, this is on Roku. I had to recalibrate. No, on the Roku mainstream. I believe that's where it is. Yeah, that they're pushing Barbenheimer. You can probably order it through Amazon, right? Something probably for like 30 bucks or something like that as they advertise it. But I was like, man, that's interesting. But this article speaks to a little bit why I was like, you know, but you're missing out. There's all the hoopla, right? I'm sure you see people post on social media maybe. They're going to the Barbie film. They're going to the Oppenheimer film. Uh, Barbie crushed it, man. $155 million. Now, we'll jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery, okay? That's their film. Universal has Oppenheimer. Barbie was 155, Oppenheimer was 80. Be interesting to see how the legs each of these films has. Because, man, I want to try and see Oppenheimer in one of those big films. Uh, how about the whole discussion about true IMAX, 70 millimeter IMAX, only 19 theaters in the whole country that you can actually go watch this thing in its true 70 millimeter IMAX dimensions, et cetera. Uh, only one in the state of Florida, somewhere over on the East Coast, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, uh, Miami, something like that. But I want to go see it, man. Christopher Nolan, if, you, if you've never seen Dunkirk, man, go check out Dunkirk. Uh, great, great movie. Saw that one in the theater as well. I encourage you to go see Oppenheimer in a theater if you get the chance, folks. Go see it in IMAX. And if you're fortunate enough to live near one of the true 70 millimeter IMAXs, look them up. Uh, go check it out in that because that's what I read, man. Be interesting to see the legs these have. As in, is Barbie going to continue to crush it? Or are people like myself, right? Is every, does everybody need to see Barbie in the theater? I don't know. But a big weekend, um, lots of Barbie parties, all that stuff. But I feel like Oppenheimer's going to have some legs, man. Almost like an avatar having legs, right? That you got to go see it in a theater. It's just such a difference. Barbie, I don't think you got to go see it in a the theater, man. Um, you know, for the hoopla, for the events, etc. maybe. Anyway, nonetheless, $235 million looks to be the biggest weekend at the box office. Not surprising. Uh, highest grossing weekend of the year is what they expect at the domestic box office. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting that you got the two of them converging, right? And you add in, um, so ticket sales, you're talking about $12.8 million for Barbie, $5.8 million for Oppenheimer, historic weekend. Um, with additional ticket sales from Paramount's newest Mission Impossible, the weekend box office is expected to reach $302 million, the highest of any weekend so far in 2000. 23. So Barbenheimer's weekend is currently said to be the fourth high, highest weekend haul of all time, just below the three-day stretch when Disney's Star Wars arrived in theaters in December 15. Uh, 2015, 313 million was the number. The second highest is 314 from April 2018 when you got Marvel in there, Avengers Infinity War, right? Usually it's Star Wars or it's Marvel or something like that. Yeah, and some are saying that Monday's official weekend numbers could be quite higher than the Sunday's estimates. We'll see where they go. Big, big movies, though. And, and good to see, you know, AMC uh, getting some press. And uh, that's a bit in pun because we jump over to AMC. And, yeah, they're rocking this morning, man, as a judge. Denies the ape deal in a surprise ruling. So what this goes to here is... Ape preferred units. Remember when they had apes and they're going to turn them into preferred shares? Um, well, those Class A shares are surging up 100% as that judge in a Delaware Chancery Court rejected a nine-figure settlement that would have let the conversion proceed while handing out extra stock to mitigate the dilution of ordinary shareholders. The agreement's precise value, which was upwards of $100 million, okay, and that excuse me, varies with the company's stock price. AMC, AMC shares spiked higher. The ape units, meanwhile, sank 63%. I remember when these came out, man, and it was a brilliant move. These people just capitalized off of the rush, right? Why not? They were the ultimate meme stock besides GameStop. 
Um, they said, hey, guess what? We're going to put out apes. We're going to turn them into preferred shares. Why not? Stock trades to $72 during the pandemic. We're at 4 bucks, but you see the volatility on that ruling, man. Up to 880 but just like that, we give back $3. Just from where we were at 520 in the morning, you give back uh, yeah, almost $2 of price action. So be careful in that one for sure. Interesting as that saga is going to play out. So they're talking about here, um, this has nothing to do with manipulations or synthetic shares. This is the judge's wording in their ruling. Uh, when it, and this is one of the analysts. Okay, so the judge says at this juncture, the court's only task is to approve or reject the proposed settlement. Cut to the chase, the settlement can't be approved as submitted. When a judge says it's time to slow down the process to make sure you get it right, the settlement needs some work. And that's one analyst out there. AMC, nonetheless, higher by about a buck forty. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Just like that, we're trading out of the gate. We're trading higher with markets catching the bid on the open right now. You got the S&Ps up by 15 points. That's a pre-market session high. We're into the trading now. Uh, but yeah, we're higher by a third of a percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, higher by a third of a percent as well. You get the Dow up by 60. That's about one-tenth percent, we'll call it. And the Russell, barely positive by one. We jump over to crude. 
backing off a bit from 78 bucks. We're at 77.53. We jump over to gold down two dollars right now at 19.64. It is Fed week, as we mentioned. Keeping our eye on the dollar. Dollar 101.27 right now. We jump over to yields, pairing some of that action as you got the 10 year right now still positive by about five ticks. And we got a 10 year yield of approaching about 3.82%, the yield on the 10 year. All right, jumping around to some of the other stories out there. You got Apple aims to keep its iPhone shipment steady despite the turmoil going on this year. They're targeting 85 million units, roughly in line with last year. And yeah, as, as you'd expect, man, the most expensive company, biggest company in the world, their fortunes affect thousands of firms and millions of workers as they go down the line for their business and the businesses they work for. Yeah, as I mentioned, it's been quite a run, man. Apple shares up 50% so far this year. When's the last time we had the biggest company in the world surging 50% in the first seven months of the year? Absolutely remarkable. Uh, the production schedule, of course, closely scrutinized. You got Samsung to Taiwan Semiconductor to Foxconn. Okay, all of the biggest corporations depend on iPhone business to drive growth and margins. Uh, they stopped disclosing specific shipment numbers in 2018 in part to shift investor focus to more predictable businesses like its App Store. Remarkable, was that long ago? Remember when they came out with that? I remember like it was yesterday, man. That's their share price. We all know that it's through the roof, man. Yeah, and their market share is just through the roof, man. Phones have declined for eight consecutive quarters, including an 8% drop in the June quarter. Chinese Android brands Vivo and Xiaomi, Xiaomi both suffered declines of more than 10%. Counterpoint estimates that Apple sales slid 2% in the most recent quarter, but its market share rose to 17% because of the continuing growth in demand for phones selling at 600 bucks or more. They're in a sweet spot, man. The sweet spot is expensive phones, even if phones overall are decreasing in the world. Phones in their market, market share, uh, where they are, expensive phones, yeah, they're doing well, man, and Apple doing well. And boy, as I just mentioned, right, they get their company, their earnings are coming out on, was it August 3rd, I believe, for Apple? Yeah, August 3rd. What are we? That's a week from Thursday. You get Amazon in there as well on that front. Let's check out some of the other Magnificent 7. NVIDIA shares, they're late in August that we'll get their numbers. Tesla, what do we already? Yeah, we already got. Did we already get Tesla numbers? Yeah, we sure did last week when they disappointed. That's right. Tesla and Netflix disappointed last week, which kind of started the slide. I mentioned that you get Microsoft with their numbers tomorrow. Yeah, July 25th. So let's see. We got about a 5% move priced in in either direction. $18.71. And a little bit more than a 5% move in either direction from Microsoft shares with their numbers. Google with their numbers tomorrow as well. You're looking at about a $7 move priced in. You jump over to Meta shares with their numbers as well. And there's a move for you, man. How about almost 10% on Meta? Let's check out this one. All right, let's put that back on a daily. Let's zoom in on the run it's had. I don't know. I had this. I've had this channel on my Meta chart for a while now. And that was the first decisive break, man. Our man Bud Rolfs. We'll see if we can get back up here and test this channel line. Maybe that's a little bit of a rollover on Meta. And boy, it's been a one-way trip from basically 88 bucks, right? The run really began on January 1st of this year at 117, but it was a boost right from 88 bucks to 320 almost on MetaShares. So don't be surprised, man, if we get lofty expectations, as was the case with Netflix and Tesla. Jumping over to Warner Brothers. So they got Barbenheimer. How about it, man? You talk about expectations, okay? This movie just crushed $155 million, man. You see the spike on some of those numbers and a give back like that. All expectations priced in, okay? Everything was priced into this equity in terms of the upside. Absolutely remarkable that it gets no bid after that type of a movie. Comcast is up about nine tenths percent. We jumped to Paramount, up about nine tenths percent. We jumped to Disney, up about half a percent so far this morning with the S&Ps continuing to climb, man. Look at this, we're within about 25 points of recent highs at 45.85 right now as we get the 10-year yield. Just happened here, right? A little bit of a spike again, let's see. Yeah, just like that, we're back pushing the highs with the 10-year yield of approaching 3.8%. All right, what else we got pulled up here? 
Yeah, the housing market. This is going to be an interesting one in light of being Fed week. Housing market rebound poses challenge for the Fed's inflation fight. This one out early this morning. Demand for homes continues to outpace supply, lifting prices. That's how supply and demand works, man. More stubborn inflation could require higher rates for longer. This is the home price index, okay? S&P, CoreLogic, Case-Shiller, U.S. National Home Price Index, seasonally adjusted. We were at 220 in 2020, and we're at 300. Yeah, we had a dip. But folks, in the context of where we came from in 2020, you can't even see that dip, and we're already going back up which is the remarkable part. And you slide down a little bit more. This is the one I really wanted to get to, okay? Number of existing homes for sale. Look at this chart compared to what happened. And look at even this chart compared to what was happening in the runoff, the run-up. As in, not surprising that homes for sale as the economy collapsed on funny money loans and flipping houses and all that stuff, okay? Everybody got foreclosed on, all the houses came up for sale. You had millions of um, houses that were owned by the banks that were getting foreclosed on and for sale by the bank, et cetera. So you got these huge spikes, right? This is millions of homes, existing homes for sale. We were up to four million. We go down, we go back up, we go down. The slide really begins to pair itself when you start get what? You get some huge investors coming in. Okay, they come in, they scoop up those properties, whatever it is. But we are back way below anything that we've seen on this chart before 2000, man. And the reason why, if you have an existing home for sale and you have an interest rate, 3.5%, 4% even, even 4.5%, even 5% right now you're giving up. 5% maybe not as much, right? But yes, if you have an existing home for sale right now, you are possibly foregoing that interest rate in terms of where you are locked in and you don't get anything when you give that up. You can't sell that loan that you have. You have to close it out. You don't even get anything for it. Think about that, right? The median home price in the four weeks ending July 16th was 382,500, up 2% from a year earlier. Houses are still rising. How about that, man? That's got to scratch your head if you're Chairman Powell. Uh, prices rose more sharply in some cities. 12% in Milwaukee, 10% in Miami, 9.5% in Cincinnati. Yeah, and they talk about, you know, you still got a good property, a desirable home. You still get potentially 10 offers in some of these areas, man. Maybe you come in just under asking, still getting 10 offers pretty close to the price. That's going to persist, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Lots still to talk about. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets continuing to run. Check it out. We're up 20 points. That's half a percent right now in the positive at 4585. We'll zoom back in on that action. What are we doing? Get it on a five minute. There you go. 4585 making session highs right now. NASDAQ 100 up by four tenths percent. We got the Dow up 125 points right now. And we jump over to Tesla shares. Their numbers last week, trading lower last week from about 300 bucks. We traded 255 this morning. We're down nine tenths percent. And yeah, looking at a little bit of electric vehicles. Interesting article from the journal out there this morning talking about here come the family of EVs. I can relate a bit, folks. I have young kids in the house. I have a small car myself still from before I had really young kids running around the house and I've been looking at potentially getting an upgrade at some point. When I do look at getting an upgrade, uh, I look at generally an SUV, got a couple young kids running around. Uh, Tommy's almost two and a half, he'll be two and a half, imagine that, two and a half years ago. Remember that when he was born? Two and a half years ago. Uh, it'd be fun to have a little bit of a bigger SUV, right? You got some car seats in there, you're always packing things. We had pool day at grandpa's yesterday, always a fun time. I feel like I'm packing for two weeks. Thankfully, I've, I've done it often enough now. It's, it's uh, a pretty quick process, but the amount of gear that you bring with you, even when your kids start to grow older, then you're gonna have the hockey bags, right? You're gonna have the football gear, you're gonna have the soccer gear, all that stuff. And yeah, so it's something that I'm looking at. And I tell you, the third row, and this is what they talk about in this article, it is really attractive. You know what's even the kicker beyond that, okay? Is if you can find it, if you can afford it, this is the one I'm dealing with, man. You look at some of the price tags of some of these vehicles, especially when you get to the upper echelons, you're talking about 100 grand, brand new, easy for some of these big SUVs. You get the captain chairs in the second row, and then you get the third row seat. That seems to be with the family, especially when you have kids in car seats, the ultimate luxury, because you can kind of walk around a bit. You got the captain's chairs in the front seat, of course. You got the captain chairs in the second row, and then you get the third row of seats. So you can throw the kids uh, car seats in the second row. You throw them in a captain chair. Maybe you throw them in the back. You can walk around, etc. I tell you, folks, from having kids, just trust me on this one. And if you have kids, you already know it, right? In terms of jumping in those cars, getting them in the seats, putting things where you want to be. If you cut two or even three kids, you really get it. Uh, and what they're talking about is here they come, man, the family of electric vehicles. They're really not available yet. So it'll be interesting to see how these vehicles come into uh, the supply of American vehicles. Automakers plan to roll out seven-seater electric vehicles, hoping to entice families to go electric. And what's interesting here is that none of really what I'm looking at is electric because they're not out there. OK, you think about families, man. Yeah, nonetheless, car camp companies are planning to roll out a slew of seven seater electric SUVs with some such as such as the Kia EV9 and Volvo is going to be out there with the EX90 expected in showrooms in the coming months. Today, there are very few options and they go in there for a lot of people. This is the quote, man. Uh, the director of global product planning at GM's Cadillac brand, okay, says for a lot of people that third row is the number one reason for purchase. It's pretty much with me, man, because I tell you, folks, a two-row SUV, as in if you just got a front seat and a back seat and then you got your SUV, yeah, it's great. You can fit a lot of stuff back there, and I'm telling you, if you got kids, again, you get it, right? But if you don't, 
you know, you got the stroller, you got the pack and play, right? Maybe you got this, you got that. Sometimes the trunk just doesn't do it. Those bigger items for an SUV. But it's not that much different than a big sedan, sometimes an SUV. Yeah, you get a little bit more room. Your trunk, of course, is much bigger, but you get the point, right? Versus that third row SUV really adds a lot, especially if you got a couple kids, you got gear, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, they're going to have the Escalade IQ large SUV coming out in August. That's Cadillac, okay? Those are often younger buyers who are re already more interested in EVs. Other companies that, are that have confirmed that have confirmed large electric SUVs in the works include Hyundai, Ford, and Toyota. Uh, there was just one large, I didn't even know this, seven seat electric SUV on sale in the US last year and this year, according to research at JD Power, um, and that's Mercedes-Benz EQS for $105,000. So the only option, right, for a seven seat SUV has been a Mercedes that's over a hundred grand. Now they also say there's a couple midsize that also have a third row. You got a Rivian and a Tesla model, but that's not really what what people are looking for, man. Because what tends to happen when they got that third row and they're a midsize is that you're basically sacrificing all trunk space for that third row. And if you really want to use your trunk space, you almost got to fold up that third row to use the trunk space. And that's not what a lot of people are looking for in that instance, because most of the time, people don't need seven seats in their car. What they're looking for is space. They're looking for third row space. So the midsize SUVs, this is myself speaking, but I get it because I see the room in the car. Uh, you want to have the ability for space. You don't want to have to use that seventh row uh, excuse me, third row or seventh seat, and then sacrifice trunk space. You want it all. There are 22 small or compact electric SUVs for sale. So the big ones are coming, man. And uh, yeah, as somebody that's got a family, you don't have to have a huge family, man, to want seven seats and three rows. So we'll see where they come out, but they're coming. Sales of midsize and large SUVs, most of which offer three rows of seating. 26% uh, of U.S. vehicle sales this year through May from 21% in 2018. It's a huge leap when you look at it, a 5% shift from 2018 to where we are in 2013, midsize and large SUVs. And like I said, man, you get some nice captain seats in the second row, um, having Tommy in there with the big car seat. The other thing, man, try and keep your kids in the car seats as long as you can, folks. Um, being on the roads is dangerous. We all see the deal. It's actually pretty cool now that they make the car seats. You can keep them in there for longer. And yeah, you know, you want to take them out, but why? Just keep them in there if you can. If you have the space, it's safer. That's the bottom line, man, because cars are dangerous. You know, we've all gotten used to the danger of cars, but they are dangerous, man. Seems like, you know, anyway, we get it. Uh, yeah, and then they talk about whether it's females to males. They talk about Kia in here that they're talking about 50% um, are going to be women that are going to be buying that. Here we go. Buyers of EVs tend to be early adopters, predominantly male, who are attracted by new technology. As automakers roll out bigger, family-oriented EVs, they have the chance to draw more females in. Okay, This is just the, the raw metrics of the numbers, man. For example, Kia expects women to account for half the buyers of the EV9. That's a futuristic-looking three-row SUV set to go on sale in the fourth quarter. I tell you, folks, Kia, I've talked about it before. Dollar for dollar, the Telluride. Might be one of the coolest vehicles out there. Check it out. Dollar for dollar, okay? It's a Kia, so it's not going to have the same type of quality as you get probably for a $105,000 Mercedes. But dollar for dollar, what you get on that Kia Telluride, it's a three-row SUV, and you can get captain seats in the second row of a Kia Telluride and get three rows, okay? Uh, but check it out. So they were doing... 75% men was what they were at previously. So they expect to do 50% women in the EV9. And meanwhile, their EV6 customer base, which is their midsize SUV, okay, that competes with Tesla's Y model, is 75% men. Absolutely remarkable that you're talking about selling a midsize SUV three out of four to guys, when realistically women are driving around the family just as much as guys, if not more, right? So there's a shift coming, man, for those big EVs. And there's a shift coming in general in terms of market forces, adoption of electric vehicles, uh, and you're seeing it play out. Remarkable, right? Only one big SUV available from Mercedes for over 105,000. It's about to change, man. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So much for higher prices. Just like that, man, markets drop like a rock. We're... Only positive by five points right now. You just gave up 16 points in a matter of about 10 minutes in the S&Ps right there. We're pushing pre-market session lows at 45.69. NASDAQ 100, man, just dropped over 100 points. Yeah, about 130 points, man. 15,490. NASDAQ, uh, excuse me, Dow holds on to the gains a bit. Russell holds on to the gains as well. We jump around to some of the big stocks. Amazon sells off more than $2. Look at this run, man. This a sell-off for you. Apple shares dive almost two dollars from where they were trading at microsoft and google tomorrow as i mentioned microsoft off about four tenths percent google shares yeah they trade lower but still holding on to some of the gains up by a percent right now we got meta later in the week as well they're off by a percent all right the day is young as i say we got basil chapman coming up next uh larry pesavento folks he's doing his show live at one o'clock as he always does and he's going to be announcing on his program he's been talking about it last week it's available on the front page of tfnn folks a week from wednesday Okay, so we get the Fed meeting this Wednesday. We got Larry Pesavento next Wednesday. August 2nd, he's going to be hosting a live trading webinar, folks. He usually does two or three of these a year. Uh, hasn't done one, I think, since April, May, March, something like that. 
Uh, it's a five-hour session, folks. He gets in there at 9 o'clock in the morning next Wednesday. He goes till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Larry usually doesn't trade for the final two hours of the trading day, which is why he lines it up like this. So it's a five-hour event. You get a month of his newsletter included, which is a $97 value right away. So that's almost $100. The cost is $295 to attend. It will be archived. It's five hours. He also teaches a lot of what he uses to trade in there. I encourage you to click on the link. Check it out. We couldn't put everything that Larry's going to be talking about on the front page, man. So check out the order page. Uh, and as I mentioned, 295 bucks. It kicks off a week from Wednesday. For you current subscribers out there to Fibonacci 24-7, that's an automatic savings of 97 bucks because you're already paying for the newsletter. So you get your next month for free included. And if you haven't checked it out, folks, check it out. Your free month starts right when you sign up, okay? And it goes for a month after the course. So get in there, sign up. Get into Fibonacci 24-7. Larry Pesavento, live trading a week from Wednesday. And stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.